I like it when a flower or a little tuft of grass grows through a crack in the concrete. It's so heroic. George Carlin It hurts to talk about history bound in chains of victory. The victory of others over the history of your ancestors, your people. The victory not won by a fight to the death, but imposed by the power of confessional and ethnic privileges. The victory of fiction over facts, lies over truth. But the historical truth, even bound in chains of lies, doesn't fall into the void of oblivion. For truth is something that cannot be avoided, it heroically breaks through like a flower through a crack in the concrete. It bursts towards the expanses of the future, like a dove of peace, a symbol of humanism, kindness and justice. In June 2016, the whole world community watched this dove of peace fly from the Republic of Armenia towards Turkey, to the mountain Agridag, which Armenians call Ararat. The bird was released by Pope Francis. It was a call for peace and reconciliation in the Armenian, Turkish and in Christian Muslim relations in general. The head of the Vatican stood right by the Armenian-Turkish border near the monastery of Horvirap and was confident that this sanctuary was built over that deep pit in which Saint Gregory the Illuminator languished for 15 years, incarcerated in the dungeon by the King Tridates III. It's not a coincidence that the Pope described his visit as a pilgrimage to the first Christian country, believing that he's visiting the very same Armenia which officially adopted Christianity as the state religion in 301. That's how strong muddy streams of century-old forgeries are. Under their pressure, no one in sacred Vatican noticed a slick interpretation of historical facts and horrific offset of geographical realities from Asia Minor to the Caucasus. After all, who was Tridates III, whose name Armenians associate with the adoption of Christianity at the state level? According to Armenian sources, he was the king of the so-called Greater Armenia. Why do we say so-called? Because this definition is inaccurate and questionable. Because none of the ancient Roman sources that preserved information about Armenia mention even a word corresponding to the concept of the great. They describe Armenia major, but not greater. Now let's see, where was Armenia major? In the area between the two rivers of Euphrates and Murat. The story goes that it was exactly there that a persecutor of Christians, Tiridates, imprisoned Gregory the Illuminator in a deep pit. Then what does the South Caucasus have to do with all this? Was it teleportation or how could the deep pit of Horvirap move from the territory of Asia Minor to the Caucasus, to the modern Republic of Armenia? Michel van Esbroek, the prospects in the study of the Caucasian churches. Despite several authoritative studies, media still mention the Armenian nation as the first to adopt Christianity even before Constantine. However, we now know from the publication of Ananyan that Gregory the Illuminator was initiated in Caesarea in Cappadocia only in 314. Despite this very reasonable chronology, Agathangelos' story, important for hagiography, continues to be read as a historical source. Agathangelos was the prime minister of the king Tridates and cousin of Gregory the Illuminator.
and his intention to assign Armenia the status of the first Christian country is clear. It's about Armenia in Asia Minor, in the territory which was called Azavazan in ancient Eastern historiography, Tower in European historiography, Armenian's highlands only from 1843. Consequently, the beautiful legend of Christian priority of Armenians does not apply to the Republic of Armenia, to which the Pope has made the pilgrimage. There are simply no arguments for that. Meanwhile, there are enough arguments both to refute this fiction and cast doubt on so-called Great Armenia being the state of first Christianity. Christianity came into Arsacid Armenia through Syriac-speaking Edessa and Greek-speaking Kayseria in Cappadocia. Therefore, there is hardly any reason to believe that Armenians came to believe in Jesus Christ as early as 301 and became the first official Christians in the world. According to the legend, King of Edessa, Abgar V, was in correspondence with Jesus Christ himself and asked him to send missionaries to Edessa and announce Christianity, the official religion in his state. So, the legitimization of Christianity took place already in the first century and in the Syrian environment. This sacred place is now called Shanlu Urfa and is located on the territory of Turkey. The Church of Edessa emerged here at the end of the 2nd century. No, not in the modern Republic of Armenia or in the Great Armenia, but here was the first Christian country of Edessa. Professor Adonz notes that the early documents of Christian literature of Armenians looked primarily toward the Syro-Persian ecclesiastical world. A prominent scientist, corresponding member of the USSR Academy of Sciences, Pigulevskaya calls Syrians teachers of the Armenians. British Syrologist Wright noted that the Armenian literature in its early days owes much to the Syrian. The power of fact is stronger than the power of lie. To prove to you, based on historical facts, that the modern Republic of Armenia is not the first Christian country, we decided to show the real place of formation of early Christianity. For this purpose, our camera crew arrived here, in the central part of Turkey, the Anatolian Plateau. Here's the Pearl of Christianity, Cappadocia, founded in the 2nd century AD. This is a place of rock-hewn churches, monastic cells, caves, where the early Christians were hiding from persecution. Here we plunge into the century, when people had seen the Christ. Cappadocia gave the world the great saints, great martyrs, such as Gregory the Illuminator, Saint George, Saint Basil the Great. We are in the Open Air Museum of Göreme. Since 1948, since 1984, this place is taken under the protection of UNESCO. And this museum proves that Muslim Turkey carefully preserves the monuments of Christianity. Thanks to the efforts of the Turkish government, to this day, Cappadocian church dating back to the 2nd century AD are preserved in their pristine glory. And that's why every year thousands of pilgrims and tourists can experience the sacrament of the architecture of rock-hewn churches. Monolithic thrones and prototypes of modern iconography remained in many altars of Cappadocian temples. The ancient rock-cut church of Cappadocia that you see in our story, like this one in front of which I stand, Aziza Barbara, like Karanlik Kilise, Ilanli, Elmali, Tokali, and others, are facts that cannot be confiscated from the history and they prove that here, in Asia Minor, in the center and the cradle of the formation of early Christianity. 
here in Asia Minor, but not in the Caucasus, not in the modern Republic of Armenia. Is it possible to find such sacred religious monuments on the territory of modern Armenia? Of course not. They simply do not exist. They were Muslim shrines, mosques, which were destroyed to erase traces of Azerbaijanism in Armenia. Is it possible to find this kind of sacred church monuments in Armenia? Of course not. There are no monuments of 2nd, 3rd, 4th century that you have seen here. Meanwhile, church monuments of another ethnicity have remained in modern Armenia. Those are Albanian churches of 5th and 6th century, history of which is grossly falsified. Today, they are falsely presented to the world as the Armenian churches, allegedly of 2nd, 3rd centuries. This forgery is required to support the Armenian claims of early Christianity. In order to expose this monstrous falsification, it's enough to come to Azerbaijan and see with your own eyes exactly the same Albanian church as in Armenia preserved in regions of the country. You are neither right nor wrong, because other people agree with you. You are right because your facts are right, and your reasoning is right. And that's the only thing that makes you right. Warren Buffett The adoption of Christianity in 301 AD at the state level in Armenia was impossible at least because, in the beginning of 2nd century AD, Armenia Major was a vassal state of the Roman Empire. Therefore, the King Tiridates put on the throne by the Romans, could declare Christianity the state religion only after the year of 313, when Emperor Constantine and Licinus signed the Edict of Milan, which was an important step towards making Christianity the official religion of the empire and the dependent territories, including Armenia Major. Karagashyan. There is no information on the past of the Armenians which could be considered history or tradition. Hayek's kinship with Noah was invented after the adoption of Christianity. It's assumed that he was a descendant of Torgon, one of the grandsons of Yafes, son of Noah. Some of old historians show Torgon, whose name is mentioned in the Jewish annals as part of Armenia. It was first written by Moses Horenazzi. Columbia University professor Nina Garsoyan convincingly proved that dating of the Christianization of Armenia and far-fetched myth of the state of early Christianity is false. The evidence base also includes the fact of the baptism of the Armenian's people headed by King Tiridates in the year of 314 after the birth of Christ in the river Euphrates. I.e. in Asia Minor, on the territory of modern Armenia, established in the Caucasus only in the early 20th century. The article Armenia in the 4th century proves that there was no united Armenia, and those entities of which it was composed were outside of South Caucasus in the territory of modern Turkey, Iran and Iraq, and in a sphere of political influence of the powerful Roman and Persian empires. The scientist explains that the Armenians began to create a history of Armenia from the 5th century since the abolition of the Armenian statehood. This means that the ancient historians have been associated with individual Naharar, princely houses, promoting their interests, and so their work cannot be read as a work of the history of Armenia, putting the geographic and national meaning in ethnicon. All ancient Armenian and subsequent chronicles are imbued with the spirit of historical falsity caused by the desire to stand out among the other nations. All that we know about Armenia shows that Armenia of 1st, 4th century, despite the supporters of the greatness of Great Armenia, cannot be presented as a religious and political unity, as a toponym with an unchanged content.
The fact of migration of Armenians to the Caucasus is reinforced by data from one of the most accurate historical sciences, anthropology. According to the research of leading Soviet anthropologists Yakov Roginsky and Maxim Levin, Armenians are not attacked in this population of the Caucasus. Anthropologists base their arguments on the following facts. Fossil skulls from burial grounds on the territory of modern Armenia has nothing to do with the skulls of modern Armenians, an Armenoid race, formed on the territory of Asia Minor. At the same time, scientists have noted that fossil skulls from burial grounds of the modern Republic of Armenia belong to the Caucasian type. Irrefutable proof from the Neolithic period, the ancestors of modern Azerbaijanis lived on the territory of the Republic of Armenia. This has been proven by the fossil skulls of Caucasian type. Armenoid race was formed on the territory of Asia Minor, but not Caucasus. What lesson can and should be drawn from history? Bound in chains of victory of others and executed by raging winners. As you can see, we are referring to authentic documents. We are right, because our facts are right, and our reasoning is right, and that's the only thing that makes us right. Tarxı tarxçılar yazmalıdı, siyasetçiler yok Objektiv yetibse eger sen ondan qoq Muasir dünya pəncərəsindən baxdıq da keçmişer Xırda görünməz niyaslar var, tarix dəyişer Nə qədə xalq, nə qədə bayraq, nə qədə mədəniyyətlər Yaddan çıxmış ədəbiyyatlar əbədi yatmamalıdır Üstü qəstdən bastırılmış məkirli niyyətlər və Abidələrin soyqırımı gizli qalmamalıdır Diril dərdi bəlkə İravan xanlığını Əgər tarix əlinə qələmi götürüb öz yazarsa kitabını Lənətləyərdi məncə məhbətlərin qatillərdi Pozardı səhifələrdən saxtı dövlət adlarını Çox Allahlı bütpərəzd, Hristiyan, Pansufi Fərqi yoxdur, qorunu maldı, hamına mədəni irsi Nə kimsə haqq tələb elədi, nə hesab sordular Tanır yar və yardımcı olsun odlar yurduna Sevgi və sülh gərəkdir bizə, amma heç biri yox Ədaləsizlikdə var, laq edik daha çox Erməni qaçqın salıb bu xalqı əzəl evindən Saxtakar düzər masaya yalanı qondarma arxivdən Siyasi maraqlar ərdən tarixə də göz yumar Riyakar zardəkanlar və torpaq üstündə qumar Qoymarıq yalan bataqlığında ictadların irsin Bizi məhsidlər şəhəri rəvanın varisi Ədalət hər şeydən əvvəl beyində başlamalıdır Gözəlliyi qurtaran dünyanın məhəbbət barışdıracaq Və gər yüz ildən bir gəlirsə gerçək əhrəman Dünyanı ədalətlər türk oğlu türk qovuşdıracaq Kərək tarixi faqlar qalmasın üstü bağlı Gözə külüfürənlər İravanda məhcid dağıdır Və beləcə dağıdı bəqiqətdə yalanlar qurdular Tanır yar və yardımcı olsun oğuz yurduna Everything, including a lie, serves the truth. Shadows do not extinguish the sun. Franz Kafka Do you see how the sun highlights the domes of mosques? It's a view of medieval Azerbaijani city of Iravan, or Erivan, as it was before the formation of the Armenian SSR in the Caucasus, on the lands of Oghuz, the ancestors of Azerbaijanis. It became known as Yerevan only in 1936. For emphasis, we will refer to the famous Armenian scientist, doctor of juridical science Agassi Yesayan, who states that in international politics until 1917, every time Armenia was mentioned, it meant just Turkish Armenia. It is about the Erevan Khanate, the Erevan Khanate on the territory of which there has never been the historical Armenia. 
If it comes to that, historical Armenia was located in Ararat region. That is far towards Turkey. So how does Armenia fit in here? We know that Armenia has historically emerged in the territory of Erivan Khanate only due to indiscretion, magnanimity and romanticism of the Musavat leaders, which gave Erivan to Dashnaks for them to have, so to say, a place for a political residence, a fixation point of political subject. And, by the way, it immediately turned into a war, which in brief period of its independence from Soviet Russia during 1918-20, Armenia immediately began to wage against Azerbaijan and Georgia. Look at this medal for the capture of Erevan. It was issued in the Russian Empire in 1829. As you can see, it depicts an image of the city built of domes and minarets of Muslim mosques, not the roof of the Armenian churches. Most recently, in the 2000s, several small mosques have been demolished in Yerevan. Notes Russian architect Andrei Ivanov in his essay the North Avenue leads to Kont. Kont is what they call in Yerevan the ancient Azerbaijani neighborhood Tepebashi. This mosque was built by a member of the Erevan town council, a descendant of the Khan family Abbas Kuluhan Iravansky. Abbas Kuluhan Iravansky. This is what's left of it today. Prior to the establishment of Armenia, there were more than 300 mosques in the territory of Erevan province. The Caucasus Almanac of 1894 states that just in Erevan there were eight main mosques. And throughout the Erevan province between 1904 and 1915, the number of sheet mosques has increased from 201 to 382. Where are they now, those mosques? There are none, as there is no medieval Azerbaijani city of Erevan. It's falsified. It's been replaced by Yerevan, which has no ancient monuments. The Dashnaks and then the Soviet Armenia leaders wiped out the medieval fortress of Erevan, built in the early 16th century by the order of Shah Ismail. the magnificent palace of Sardar and even Muslim religious shrines. How to encourage the progressive international community to stop the vandalism of any kind? These facts serve the truth. Only the light of memory illuminates them, of our memory, of our history, in our land, the one that is today called Armenia. Memory is the only paradise from which we cannot be driven, and memory of the medieval Azerbaijani city of Erevan is a paradise in which we will definitely return. This is what President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, convincingly states from all high international tribunes. The Azerbaijanis should live on all of their historical lands in the future. Our historical lands are the Erevan Khanate, the Goycha and Zangezur Mahals. The time will come when we will live there. I believe in and I'm sure of that.